from the heart of Dubai, where tomorrow is being built today to the world. Welcome to the CTO Show with Mehmet. Here, we redefine technology and reimagine possibilities. With Mehmet, delve into the riveting realms of AI, cybersecurity, and digital technology. Experience the thrilling highs and lows of startups. Immerse yourself in the spirit of entrepreneurship and witness the future of business innovation being written in real time. Now, without further ado, let's tune in and explore the future. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of the CTO Show with Mehmet. Today, I'm very pleased joining me, Roman Axelrod. Roman is the CEO and founder of Spansio. Roman, the way I love to do it is I keep it to my guests to tell us a little bit about themselves, their journey, and what they are up to. So the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Mehmet. Um, very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Hey, everyone. My name is Roman. Uh, I'm 33 years old. And uh, for the last 30 years, I've been building and selling technology companies. And... Um, for the last probably five years, I've been living with the feeling that all these gadgets, uh, these computers are outdated, are obsolete, and that humanity needs a new, uh, a next generation of computing, a new type of gadget to merge all of them. Just imagine, I personally, I need four computers just just to survive my my typical day laptop tablets uh probably smartwatch uh gaming console sometimes two gaming consoles just to bear my functionality uh and they're all not interchangeable the screens are not reshapable uh they're bulky they're heavy they uh, enslave us, they enslave us with their batteries. Basically, uh, I, I'm more concerned uh, if I have a, enough phone battery than I'm concerned about have I eaten anything today. Uh, because, well, you know that. Uh, you know that feeling when you're off the grid and you understand that. You have multiple quest questions and zooms and et cetera, et cetera, to attend to. So I wanted to merge, uh, and let's not forget that the um, thing is that humanity had set itself a few targets for at least 100 years, and these targets are, um, well, you, you cannot perform these targets with the current generation of computing we will not become interplanetary species uh, with these computers. We will, not, um, uh, we will not be able to radically improve quality of life. Uh, we basically were stuck, um, and everyone understands that the next generation of computing is spatial computing, as, uh, as for example, Apple uh, calls it. The uh, thing is, Think of it about think about it as a computer of Tony Stark. Bang, uh, the three dimensional computer appears around you. You operate it by eyes, by voice, by gestures. Probably a little bit later by mind, uh, but that's going to happen later. Uh, and the only thing that prevents us from using this computer is basically bad gadgets. They're all. Bulky, not that interchangeable. They're dirty. They, uh, they, they just, they're just bad. Um, I can't imagine myself walking around the streets wearing Oculus Three. No, no, no. Well, no offense, Oculus. The gadget itself is great, but not for this type of use. <clears throat> So we decided to concentrate on uh, creation of such a gadget that would provide humanity with um, with uh, with the ability to merge all those gadgets into one. 
uh, we decided to try to create uh, a contact lens, uh, just a normal looking soft contact lens that uh, around 300 million people use every day on the planet Earth, but able to provide for um, XR experience, to provide you with image, to measure biological parameters, and to provide you with the so-called night vision. We have been incredibly lucky to gather some of the brightest minds of physics under one roof. Uh, so far, we have been awarded as top five optics labs in the world and top 10 research institutions in the UAE among all types of research institutions, not only physics, not only optics, but all of them. Uh, by now, we have a few stable prototypes. Uh, so basically, in case you're, you're around Internet City in Dubai, please do feel free to knock my door, and I will be more than happy to show you prototypes and to tell you more about it. And we have uh, around 30 patients pending. Uh, we hope to approach human trials. So the, the, uh, the, 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 the king of question is when we, we will be able to use such a gadget. Well, we intend to approach human trials in 2026. Then it depends how much time will take human trials. If it's, if it's usually a few years, but well, we hope to cope with that within one or two years. And I would say that in 2027, 2028, probably 2029, you will be able to buy this gadget and to use it on a daily basis. I think that'd be it. Yeah. So, Roman, just out of curiosity, what you're doing is, you know, the use case is such a fantastic use case. You know, you you um, you summarize. I mean, the the problem, which is usually why uh, founders like yourself they come up with a solution because everyone agrees that computing cannot uh, continue in the way that we've been doing it. But tell me one thing, and just just out of curiosity. So, so it's a contact lens, right? So it's like similar to the ones. So if, if I don't want to wear my glasses, I will just get a, a lens and I will, mm -hmm. I will stick it. Do you think that this is something that can go, I mean, let's say if someone who has like maybe some, like myself, fear from contact lenses, <laughs> How how you convince me to to wear these? Because see, I still wear glasses. People tell me, yeah, like you can do the the kind of. But just as I'm trying to understand, like how far this can go. Well, you see, uh, we have we have uh, spent a lot of time, resources, and energy on um, on basically interviewing people of their ability to wear these lenses and you well preferred use cases so we have spent a lot of lot of time and effort on customer developments and so far we know that uh when you have a poor eyesight you have a few options to do the surgery to wear glasses to wear lenses or just do nothing and suffer um, people who wear glasses are usually comfortable uh, with uh, glasses. People who do not want to wear glasses wear contact lenses. And the main scenario, the main, so to say, the main thing behind wearing contact lenses is that the one who wears them doesn't want to wear glasses. And there are about 300 million people who wear uh, contact lenses on a daily basis. And we primarily aim on them, of course. So basically, we, first of all, we will provide this with this gadgets, with this gadget, we will provide uh, uh, those people who do not need to be convinced 
And then when these, once they see the, uh, the awesomeness of this gadget, they will convince yourself. Now they, they will convince you and uh, other, other people who are, who are reluctant about that. Yeah, yeah, no, but absolutely, you know. Um, but well, you're, you're absolutely right. The first generation of gadget is very narrow, very narrow, comparing to I don't know, comparing to iPhone, comparing to uh, wireless, uh, comparing to earbuds. It's very narrow. Yes, absolutely. Of course, we do understand that. Yeah, but the use cases, you know, and I was checking also the website, Roman, before, uh, you know, we, we get on to the, 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 the show here to record. You know, I, I was mind blown because the use cases, is, and I think, you know, in the prototype, you know, like you, you were able to achieve something that really it will be beneficial. And, you know, when I thought about the use cases, it's not only just for computing purpose. It's not like, you know, I can, yeah, I can put a screen in front of me and, and read. But it goes beyond that. So now with Absolutely. the prototype and capabilities, if you can like focus on the main thing, for example, tell me more about, you know, the, the night vision, tell me about the, the health monitoring. So what, what you can, you know, like uh, shed some light on, on the different use cases also as well that we will be able to have uh, with the sure. smart lenses. Well, uh, my work song, of course, is to operate the world via the advance. So basically, we, you will be able to uh, to open your car, to, to to turn on your car, to open your I don't know your safe, your doors, your computer, your bank accounts, your everything. You will be able to operate your life basically with just a glance, and uh, at the same time, be absolutely calm about your personal data and that um and uh, the uh, the ability of someone to steal your 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 identity or your data or your uh, passwords or your something because it will not only when you use your uh, your eye as a mean of um as um as as a tool to to uh, to perform such uh, any type of action like probably when you use your eye to uh, to perform a money transaction, uh, you only use your retina. When you use your eye with a contact lens, you will use three uh, layers of uh, security, and your uh, eye is one, only one of them. Other two are incorporated in the lens. So um, that's my love song, of course. I I personally I really do wait for this uh, for this for, the, for, the, for this functionality because I hate uh, I hate the uh, uh, taking with me like bunch of keys, uh, plastic cards, phone, etc., etc., etc. I would rather use one gadget to 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 to, to uh, as an ultimate mean of access to my life, uh, access and operation. I would say. But, uh, of course, then it comes to health monitoring. Health monitoring uh, works basically, well, basically it's very, it's not very simple. It, uh, it's, um, um, thing is that we, as a company, we develop, um, not only, uh, now, we develop all kinds of electronics that will be embedded to a contact lens. And uh, the problem behind this this whole concept is to make this electronics, these gadgets, these uh, components, these sensors, so small, transparent, and biocompatible that would, they will be able to 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 be put on the contact lens. Uh, we are well, basically, the whole the whole company was gathered around the uh, best minds in modern optoelectronics uh, developing new materials uh, that are more, well, thousand times more thin than the current ones uh, big techs use in creating their, their gadgets. So basically, we spend a lot of time on creating new materials, very thin, very light, 
very transparent and very biocompatible. Then we produce uh, gadgets, uh, components, sensors out of those materials. And then we, we put them onto a normal looking soft contact lens. Uh, we aim at uh, five parameters, heart rate, IOP, intraocular pressure, of course, glucose, uh, I, um, blood pressure, and, uh, um, and uh, sorry, I, uh, I forgot the proper, the proper word in English. That's uh, fine. But you, you're very much welcome to, to, to check it on our, our website. The idea behind that is to provide you with, uh, with, uh, very narrow, very up to date advice. Uh, not the, not that type of advice, like not, not that Apple Watch type of advice. Apple Watch just informs you about the fact that your blood pressure is high. Mm -hmm. We want to provide you with the advice, like, uh, the lens sees another cup of coffee and tells you it's enough of coffee. Your blood pressure is too high. Or, uh, the lens sees me and says you stop talking to Roman. He irritates you. Uh, cut, cut, uh, cut, uh, the time you spent with Roman. Uh, he clearly, we, I, I, as a gadget, I see by judging by your parameters that we feel bad near this person. Uh, so we wanted to, to, to make it more narrow, I would say. Perfect. Just again, like out of curiosity, and I didn't prepare these questions, but because, you know, I'm now trying to uh, visualize, you know, the, the, the whole thing working together. Do I need to be always connected to the internet to make this working or it can be active by its own? No, absolutely. You don't have to be connected to the internet. See, uh, I have to explain one thing. We do not sure. create, we do not try to put the whole computing system on, onto your eye. We only, um, we only put their, uh, components um, responsible for image, sensing and night vision. Uh, the computing power will be stored somewhere else. We, uh, we call, uh, we call it a companion device. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a device, uh, probably this size, uh, that will contain the, uh, SIM card to use internet, a computing power to basically to to work with all the data you have gathered with the lens and that will connect with the, with the lens wirelessly. And at the same time, it will provide energy for the lens. Uh, so basically you will be able to wear them like a normal contact lens day to day. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole, the whole, the whole concept behind product management of the company is to make it as comfortable and reliable as just a basic contact lens. Got it. Roman, also like out of curiosity and, you know, uh, I, I grew up in, uh, uh, in an environment where I was seeing, you know, the chips year after year getting smaller and smaller and smaller, <laughs> right? And a few days back, we last week, we saw like NVIDIA and, you know, the, the chip that has 200 billion transistors in just, you know, like, uh, like maybe smaller than my my palm, but how how do you in do you think the manufacturing uh, of of uh, the lances would be uh, hard? Like do do will you need a sophisticated uh, manufacturing plan to to get you know these small uh, size? I would say as you mentioned, like it's it's atomic size. I would say because you try to put Absolutely. all this. Yeah. Uh, so, so can you tell me a little bit more about sure, know, how absolutely. you envision that? Yeah. That is, that is actually very interesting. Very interesting. You see, uh, today we live in the Silicon era. All our gadgets are produced. The, uh, well, the key, the main, uh, the main material behind 
all kinds of gadgets we use is silicon. And uh, why don't we have mm, those uh, beautiful looking AR glasses? Because silica and uh, lithium uh, battery batteries are just too big. Uh, so basically you need a lot of space to put components made of silicon. That is why all the gadgets, all uh, the um, all the um, uh, XR, MR gadgets are so bulky, so huge, like like, like Vision Pro or uh, Oculus or even X Real and Real. They're all relatively big. The idea is to you is not to use the silicon era technology at all. Probably you heard that, oh my God, about 12, 13 years ago, two um, Russian physicists, uh, Game and Novasolov, they received the Nobel Prize for discovering um, new, co new qualities of uh, two-dimensional materials. You probably know the hyped word graphene. Uh, um, so... Uh, our company has emerged from the lab that was that concentrated on two-dimensional materials, atomic thin materials. Like I'm not joking, basically those materials are one atom thin. Uh, the um, so my co-founder uh, who appears to my co-founder co-founder Valentin Volkov who appears to be one of the world's most well-known scientists in uh, modern optoelectronics and to the materials field. Um, he spent like 25 years developing them. Uh, and the whole, the whole idea of the company, the whole, the, 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 the lab behind the company specializes in creation of those materials. And as you may imagine, there are no means in the world to produce gadgets out of those materials. So basically when you need to produce a new type of, I don't know, smartphone foldable, this smart, I don't know, you, you want to produce a foldable smartphone that will fold in four dimensions or six dimensions. You just call TSMC and say, TSMC, hey, I, I need this, the, this kind of uh, wafers, I need this kind of chips, I need this kind of everything. Uh, you don't have such an option uh, when we uh, when we speak about um, when we speak about uh, XR gadgets. So basically, even with those gadgets like uh, Vision Pro that are silicon based, still I have to say I have, from 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 the, from the engineering standpoint, I absolutely admire what they did. This 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 gadget is a lot stronger. And I really do wait for next generations, and I expect them to become even more cool from from the engineering side of view. But even they were forced to reinvent the whole production process. Uh, we do not use silicon-based tech, so it's absolutely up to us how to produce and how to scale production of this gadget. So far, we think about very sophisticated 3D printing. And in our lab, um, we have a lot of, um, I would describe it as a, some sort of, um, of a con conjunction of, of, of a mic microscope 3D printer and a robot that is able to 3D print those TDV components and at the same time using robotic arms to put them onto the lens. That's, uh, that's the current state of the uh, affairs, but we really, we absolutely understand that, uh, in a few years, we will need a whole new concept of, of production of gadgets. Absolutely. Uh, before I shift to gears, you know, I talk a little bit about the, the, the 
the business side. But again, mm-hmm. the technology perspective, uh, of course, like AI is you know everywhere and everyone is talking about AI. So how are you planning to leverage the AI integration with the, with the lenses, Roman? Uh, very simple question. Uh, I do believe that AI is the next generation of computing and the lens is uh, the interface for this, uh, for this uh, generation. So judging by the, I, I, I envision AI and uh, generative AI, especially as, as a miracle. This is an absolute miracle. And the last time I had this feeling of magic as when I saw the first iPhone in, uh, in uh, 2006. Uh, we create, I want you to think about the computing of, of the future as, a, as an ecosystem of software and apps you use every day. Uh, while having multiple interfaces to use this same ecosystem and apps. Uh, when you're at home, anything can be your screen, all your walls, all your surfaces, all your, even yourself, you can be a screen. When you're at home, when you're not concerned about privacy, when you're alone, where there are only uh, closest ones and loved ones around you and you're not, you're not feeling uh, well, uh, you, you don't you you don't you don't have a necessity to 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 preserve your um, your um, your your information. When you're outside, when you're at work, you can use your glasses. When you're on on when you're jogging or when you're driving a motorbike or a helicopter or in space, you can use your contact lens. You will have you will have multiple ways to consume uh, this. Um, this ecosystem of software and apps, you will have multiple interfaces. And I believe that AI assistant will be a key point of contact and center of this uh, new ecosystem. At least I, uh, I would very much love to have such a system and you can, well, humanity has imagined such a thing for decades. Just uh, look at uh, the evolution of um, of uh, of Jarvis and uh, Iron Man movies. It starts with just a voice in Tony Stark's head in the helmet, and then it uh, it becomes a human-like being, and then, uh, well, it well <laughs> it takes us to a rather scary, scary, uh, scary uh, Elon Muskish thing about. Uh, <laughs> about uh, the uh, the ability of uh, general AI to 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 put itself instead of humans but still uh humanity has imagined this the state of computing system for decades and i think it's time for it yeah to to your point and i think i mentioned uh, previously you know when when we were kids you know i'm in the, from the generation that uh, when in the cartoons where they used to show us like people doing video conferencing, we were like laughing at them, like, see these guys, they are crazy. Mm-hmm. Or when, you know, the, the, they, they call some, some hero using the watch and then they, again, to your point, so of course, like what's, everything started with that imagination and then it, it, uh, it is proven that it can happen and all what it is behind You, you know what, uh, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, in 2014, 15 and 16, I worked in a company that uh, developed uh, AI algorithms, computer vision algorithms for self-driving. And I was responsible for commercial sites. So basically I was responsible for selling those algorithms to car makers. And as I approached them, as I approached the uh, conferences and uh, um, as I uh, spoke to them, Remember, 2014, 2015, that was considered as a real deep fact. Neural networks, are you guys biologists or what? Uh, it was only 10 years ago. Now, today in 2024, 
Everyone knows what the neural network is. Everyone knows what the machine learning is. Um, and, well, basically, I use almost any type of business, especially B2C, B2C business, use those technologies. So it took only 10 years to, for them to become fully acceptable within the society. Absolutely. Now, uh, Roman, you, you are into, you just mentioned, you are into the deep tech, right? And you choose to have Dubai as your headquarter. And this is something I kept nagging, if, if I might say, why we don't have too much deep tech here. So, of course, we have plenty of successful B2C businesses, whether they are into the food delivery apps, ride hailing. We start to see some B2B fintech, HR tech, deep tech. But you choose Dubai to be your headquarter. What drove this decision to choose Dubai? And Very easy. Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, thing is that myself, I'm Russian. And my partner, my co-founder, and the CTO of the company is Ukrainian. Yes, it happens. And uh, we have started the company because before the Ukrainian outbreak, and the whole company was located in uh, in uh, uh, Denmark, Moscow, and partly Eastern Europe, Kiev, and so on. Uh, and the whole company, the, the first generation of employees, they're all either Ukrainians or Russians, and we're all friends. And we do not want to be involved in this kind of situation. We just don't want to have anything in common with this war. So we well, we say make plans, not war. Uh, so when uh, the Ukrainian outbreak started, we decided to relocate the whole country uh, and not to wait uh, until something even worse happens. And of course, um, we wanted to be in a place very safe and very open-minded. And of course, uh, if I were asked 10 years ago, where should such a company be located? I would definitely answer Switzerland. Mm -hmm. uh, Switzerland or Germany or USA. Um, but today I see, first of all, that well, everyday life, day-to-day -day life in Dubai is much more comfortable than in those states. Uh, the culture, the, her the heritage, the, um, the way the country is operated, the, uh, the safety, the cleanness, the, the way, uh, the way that, the way the uh, rulers of the country see its future. It, it resonates with us hugely, heavily. And I see on a personal notice, I see many, 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 many people from, from the UK, from, uh, um, from Switzerland, from, uh, from the US, but well, of course, from the UK especially. Uh, wishing to immigrate to, to, to the Middle East, wishing to immigrate to, to either Dubai or Abu Dhabi or Saudi or Bahrain, because everyone understands that the next chapter of the, the humanity's development will not happen in Europe and in the US. With all due respect, uh, those, those countries have, they, 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 they have, they had their time. They, they have their centuries. But I think that in, in the coming, in the coming decades and even centuries, the, the new world, the Asia Pacific, the, uh, the South America, MENA region is going to, is going to not to say prevail but at least play a very simple control. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, 
again, because you're still in in in, in a uh, prototype uh, phase, I would say. So, how how important and how easy was also be, being here in Dubai uh, to seek for oh. funding or establish partnerships? Like, because you know, a lot of people ask me, especially people who are in the US and in Europe, like, guys, how's how's the I mean, the funding there going, like, uh, is it like the US you go, I mean, in in Silicon Valley, we hear about these stories, someone goes, they take a check and so on. I know that it's still developing, but also I want your uh, opinion, Roman, and this is maybe to inspire more people to come here and, you know, they start their deep tech, as I said. Well, uh, see, thing is that uh, the only thing about the only thing about us and california is money uh the ecosystem is bad is outdated the infrastructure is bad the um the day-to-day life is well let's say complicated uh with all those uh Problems with crime and, um, and et cetera, et cetera. And on a personal basis, I have, I have a wife and three year old son. And, uh, uh, when I'm in Dubai, uh, I am absolutely calm when my wife takes my son to, to kindergarten. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, and to be frank, I wouldn't let her do the same thing in San Francisco. I would definitely escort them myself to a kindergarten. Um, so the main thing is, uh, money and the ability to raise, um, in case you want to do business within the U S in case you want to create a product for the U S market, be it B2C or B2B or whatever, you definitely need to be there because no investment fund no uh, reputable investment authority will invest into your company uh, in case you do not have presence in the U.S. Uh, It always starts with, uh, you guys have presence in the U.S. Where's the the lab? Where are the scientists? Where, 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 Where are IPs located? So if you want to, uh, to, create something for the U.S. market or for U.S. corps, corporations or big tax. Well, you have to be there. In case you don't want to be there, uh, for example, we have raised a substantial amount of money. Our seed round was 40 million U.S. dollars from uh, from a very well-established and reputable Hong Kong-based uh, investment fund. And in case you do not want to create, and we, we, from the very beginning, we were about uh, um, uh, developing a, a new technology. We didn't want it to be specific for US market or, I don't know, Germany market or something like that. And um, we, 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 we just sort of took a long-term approach for this question. Uh, we understand that in case we succeed as a company developing a product, uh, we will probably um, become a next Apple or sort of that. In case we don't succeed, it doesn't matter where we were. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, by now, we see that it is absolutely great to raise money being in Dubai to raise money from uh, Asian investors, from local mar- from the local markets, uh, from uh, from European uh, investment funds, especially from the UK based investment funds, uh, that works, and we see a huge amount of money flowing into the region, except from the US. So. You have this sort of a crossroad in case you want to create something for the U.S. market, and you have no options but to be there. Uh, in case you want to create something for humanity, for the rest of the world, for etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you have a few. For deep tech companies, I would say 
you have yes. a few places in the world, Switzerland, Germany, UK, Dubai, Singapore. That's what I see from my perspective. Uh, we chose Dubai because uh, transport, uh, because of the safety, because of the local market, because of uh, the um, because of the way rulers of the country see the future uh, and the amount of time and money and effort they actually spent to work for the future. Uh, well, we thought about uh, and let's not forget that. Um, being in Dubai, you're able to buy any type of equipment and to relocate any kind of uh, any kind of workforce within five to ten hours. So you only need five to ten hours to reach New York, eight hours to London, eight hours to Singapore. Perfect place from from the logistics standpoint. And we we have already spent six million dollars on the on the lab equipment only that is okay. huge for us uh and well this is very important it's to be uh, and of course the majority of the of the equipment is produced either in us germany japan south korea so we're in a sweet spot between them perfect absolutely perfect place. Absol absolutely roman and you know like uh uh, people ask me sometime, like, how is it like in there? And just to your point, one thing I want to add from my perspective is actually, yeah, U.S. money doesn't come here because if you are not there, but the opposite is right. We started to see actually the local funds here, family offices, uh, sovereign uh, uh, investment authorities actually investing in U.S. and trying actually to help them to get the market here. The other day I was to... I adore yeah. it. I adore yeah. it. to be to be to be for to be frank, I I I adore the level of local ambition. Absolutely. Uh, uh I adore it. Th Thirty years ago we were like a small country partly and basically unknown. Today we're one of the key financial centers of the world. And I adore that they absolutely bluntly say that in the next 30 years we will dominate the planet yeah mind-blowing exactly uh, I, I remember i remember if, if if in 2005 the year i arrived to this country if someone would tell me uh hey there will be a deep tech copy out of here like said, what but the, <laughs> I, the, the in I remember very well. It was the financial crisis. Maybe I'm sharing this the first time on the on the podcast in 2009, 2010, when everyone was leaving actually Dubai, and everyone was saying, "They're done. You're wasting your time." There, I said, "Okay, let me just tell you one thing. The way you know this infrastructure, you know the way they have designed, you know everything, how it, the processes. I would say, you know, this is this is not something that you can just throw because this is something sustainable and the infrastructure is sustainable. And I was right. 2012, things started to boom again and, you know, things started. And now here we go. We are 2024. And yeah, like, uh, absolutely. Roman, final thing. I know, like, I took more than I was just <laughs> supposed to take from your time. But I want you, because you have done multiple exits also previously, right? So... How we can encourage more uh, aspiring entrepreneurs to be in the deep tech space? Mm, that's the worst uh, thing if you want <laughs> just to make money. If you want to make money, uh, do right feeling, food delivery, uh, fintech, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I was, uh, well, my, um, I, I, I took part in selling three companies. In two of them, I was a hired top manager with uh, with an option, and the last company I was one of three co-founders. Um, they all were in first. The first of them uh, was in the tech space, and then it was esports and fintech. So uh, I specifically decided to switch to deep tech because I wanted to not to create a company, pump it, and sell them within three years. I wanted to, I decided that I want to create something. 
Um, well, you, you see, I have a tattoo. We, we are here to put a dent in the universe. Uh, famous quote Purpose. by Steve Jobs. Purpose. Uh, and I decided to follow this tattoo to create something that will actually help humanity, that will actually change lives to the best of And since I'm, I'm a total freak about gadgets, I just wanted to contribute to this whole movement of the planet. I, I will be, in case Spansio just creates one state of component that will be a part of the computer of the future, I will be incredibly lucky, lucky because I just want to contribute to computers of the future. You know, my, my, my grandfather was one of the first Soviet engineers uh, responsible for creation of those first Soviet computers of 40s and 50s. And uh, for me, it's like, like, you know, I'm a business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but to your point, you know, uh, to your point, uh, Roman, if you allow me, it's it's not about the money only. And I think the absolutely. reason why the reason why some some startups fail because the founders they think, and unfortunately, especially in our region, because we're very biased by some other places, is oh yeah, like I will raise money, go to Series B, Series C, sell the company, and I will become rich, and then I will stay on the beach. I tell people, guys, it's not about this; it's about your purpose. And I like when you showed the tattoo. What what are you planning to leave after you die? Like, what's your legacy? As absolutely, they say? yeah. Absolutely. So, but deep tech what's is not legacy? easy. Deep tech is not easy. You know, um, like it's probably one of the most uh, complicated uh, types of business in the world. But Start I think it's rewarding. The best. Absolutely. In case you succeed, you have a chance to 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 um, to make impact. No, out of curiosity, sorry, out of yes. curiosity, but think, correct me if I'm wrong. Also in deep tech, because you just mentioned like if you succeed, but I think you learn a lot even if you fail, right? Absolutely. Wow. Uh, sure. And the whole idea to create a startup, and in case you even moderately moderately succeed with your startup, like in case you was able to raise seed. And to leave, live with the seed three years, trying multiple, multiple ways to to develop the startup, and then the startup failed. This will be a crazy influx of experience into one person. You will need thirty years of. Um, you will probably you won't probably learn as much uh, working uh, working as a hired person. What, 30 years. Uh, so basically creating a startup is trying to put all your professional life in within three to five years. And with all due respect, I, I don't see many, many successful founders wishing to lie at the beach. Uh, most of successful founders are just people who enjoy this type of life, who are, uh, energy, uh, who, 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 who cannot live with this, uh, with this type of energy and this type of risk. Um, uh, so with all due respect, in case you want to lie on the beach, I would suggest either creating something very, very simple, like food delivery and selling it within two, three years, or just to find a good job and to save money and to invest money and to, uh, well, have a long weekend, I would say. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's a journey. It's not like, uh, just one time thing. And, and, and it's not about the destination. It's uh, clearly being, being, being a startup founder and especially a deep tech entrepreneur, it's clearly not about uh, the, uh, the, um, the, um, the amount of money within five years. Uh, it's, it is about the destination and the, well, you, you know, I always say that I, my, my job is to provide picture of the future. So basically my job is to provide my team with a, very clear, very specific image of the future. 
and to provide them with money and resources to reach this 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 point. So uh, yes, in case you want to make money, you have to you definitely have to do something else. But in case you want to change the world uh, to contribute to overall humanity and to probably make insane amount of money in the end, uh, right. you should probably try. That's that's fantastic. Uh, Roman, finally, where we can find, how we can follow, uh, you know, all the updates about uh, the company and also get in touch with you if someone is interested. Uh, um, well, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn page of a company, my LinkedIn page, uh, LinkedIn page of Michael Felder, uh, my Facebook, my Instagram, and of course, uh, the press releases on our website. Okay, great. I will make sure that I will put uh, these links uh, in, in the show notes. Sure, okay. absolutely. And in case someone wonders about something, please do feel free to text me in uh, LinkedIn or in Telegram uh, to just, just, just to bluntly ask questions. Sure, definitely. Roman, like, really, I enjoyed the discussion with you today. It was well, very rich. The pleasure is mine. Uh, uh, you know, and what you're doing is uh, not only as a tech enthusiast, I would say, and I, uh, you know, someone who have background in technology, get me excited. What get me excited is the, you know, your your vision and your passion and your purpose of you know putting your dads in the world. And this is why I aim to do uh, with this uh, with this podcast. Hopefully, I can succeed still work in progress we will see and uh, again this is for the you know audience if you just found this podcast by luck thank you for passing by i hope you like it and enjoyed it so if you did please subscribe and share it with your friends and colleagues and if you are one of the loyal followers thank you very much for keep tuning in i really appreciate it send me your suggestions your feedbacks your comments i love to read them all thank you very much and we'll be again in a, a new episode very soon thank you bye bye Hit that subscribe button, share the show with your tech-savvy friends and fellow entrepreneurs, and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Your support means the world to us.